as you know, I was fortunate to lead the previous uh, Interact studies where we looked at early intensive blood pressure lowering within a six hour time window. We, uh, our protocol was to reduce blood pressure from an elevated level above 150 systolic uh, down to a 140 systolic target within one hour. Um, and our primary result of Interact 2, which was published 10 years ago now, uh, showed a borderline significant result. It just depended on how you measured the outcome on the modified Rankin scale. If it's a shift, which we've done on Interact 3, where you look at all of the parameters, gives you a little bit more statistical power. It was positive, 0.04. If it's a binary, um, then it was 0.06. The parallel... Uh, American study called ATAC-2 used a, a different protocol, a more rapid uh, blood pressure reduction and a lower target. Um, that uh, uh, was stopped due to futility. It was a neutral result. So there was difference in the management there. So I think if you look at the data, pull the data together with all of the other trials, that um, blood pressure reduction over an hour period to a 140 systolic target looks very safe in an intracerebral hemorrhage patient population. And um, then we also know that that can control bleeding. And now with Interact 3, we can show that this can uh, improve clinical outcome. Interact 2 took 2,000 patients. Interact 3s required 7,000 patients. It just shows you the value of large sample sizes to uh, bring out um, statistically significant results for modest treatment effect. Actually, Interact 3, we did a number needed to treat, which is often a metric to show how powerful the treatment, event, uh, treatment effect is. And our number needed to treat in uh, Interact 3 was uh, 45. So that's, um, that's much better than um, aspirin um, and it's much better with than many um, blood pressure drugs or uh, medicines that we use in cardiovascular disease. So the 140 target now looks pretty solid and getting that blood pressure under control within a six-hour time window for intracerebral hemorrhage seems reasonable. The problem is that most bleeding in intracerebral hemorrhage is um, plateaus out or is maximum within four hours. So theoretically, if you could get the blood pressure under very good control just within the first few hours of intracerebral hemorrhage, it would be better for the patient. Now, how are you going to do that? Try it in the ambulance. Uh, or you could try it very quickly in um, the emergency department. And at the moment, we don't have the um, the evidence that that's going to work. So that's we need more research on that is very early control of blood pressure in the ambulance or immediately upon arrival uh, in the emergency department. And there's ongoing uh, clinical trials in that area to give us the results. And we should learn about that in the next 12 to 18 months. The other question is, you know, which, what's the best drug? Um, there's a variety of drugs that are available. None of them are absolutely ideal. Um, and um, But there's some evidence that maybe the nitrates may be a little um, uh, harmful in people with intracerebral hemorrhage. They uh, venodilate and they may have um, uh, an antithrombotic effect. Um, so we're a little bit cautious of the um, with the nitrates, um, and then amongst the other blood pressure drugs, you know what's easiest to use to try titrate the blood pressure, and uh, what's uh, what's uh, something that is well tolerated and uh, without side effects and and uh, easy to escalate the dose. Um, they they're sort sort of um, things that we need to work out. Um, but uh, at the moment, our results suggest that any of the drugs work. It's it's to bring the blood pressure down is more important than the the um, the agent that uh, you choose to use.